our second lecture of the series um, is going to deal with light and dark reactions. So we're just going to focus on this. Um, you're going to be seeing, I'm going to break this down as actual an, a drawing, and we'll do some parts of this in class to where we'll walk through it. But I would, I'm going to be referring to this as we go through it. So sun, we see this uh, thylakoid membrane. So the chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight, which is used um, for photosynthesis. And so here's a chloroplast. This whole structure is a chloroplast. We'll talk about the Calvin cycle and what these membranes mean down here. So one thing you do need to know is the equation for photosynthesis. So if I look at this, let's say that's carbon dioxide. I've got six molecules of that, six molecules of water, sunlight. Sometimes they'll write uh, light over the top of the arrow, light energy. It's going to make one glucose molecule. So you notice the one to one ratio, and that's a sugar. So remember back from chemistry that this is a carbohydrate. Okay, a simple sugar has a ratio, a one to one ratio. And also the plants will give off six molecules of oxygen. So if you just remember what plants need and what plants make, um, that should make it easy on the equation. So here it's written again. So definitely put this in your spiral notebook. Now, I had said earlier that photosynthesis is has two pathways, light and dark reactions. And I mentioned that in the last lecture. So we're gonna focus on this as we go through. So hopefully you remember that, I guess I didn't get a pen color here. Okay, so everything on this side of the arrow are my reactants. Because you'll have some questions about this. And everything to the right of the arrow are my products. Now you'll notice that we added water, and but in our equation we did not have that. That's because the water is going to be recycled and it's actually going to be a vapor. Because remember, water vapor can leave the leaf through the stomata and guard cells. Okay, so let's look at each part, where it's going to be moved, transported in the leaf, and where it might go. So water is transported to the leaf in the xylem. Remember, the water is going from the roots up to the leaves. Carbon dioxide, that's what the plant needs, so we breathe out carbon dioxide as humans and other animals. It's going to enter the leaf through the stomata and the guard cells. Light is going to be absorbed by chlorophyll, the pigment of the chloroplast. Let me go to the rest of my equation here. Okay, glucose is the sugar. So here, if it's made in the leaves, it's going to trans be transported through the phloem and that could be, it'll be stored in either the stems or the roots. So think of if it's food stored in maybe the root, carrots would be an example. So you're eating the carrot. Um, that's the food that the plant makes in the root structure. Okay, oxygen, that's going to leave the leaf. So plants give off oxygen. We breathe in oxygen. And so it's going to exit the leaf through the stomata and guard cells. And then the water I mentioned just a moment ago is going to be recycled or reused. And of course, it's going to lose some water vapor um, when the stomatas are open. Okay. So light reaction. So we're just gonna focus on this part of the drawing that I showed earlier. So the sunlight is going to be trapped. And really for these reactions, you need to be able to recognize what's going in and what's going out and some of the key players. I'm not gonna go in depth if you want to get more into that. You, that'll be covered in AP Biology if you take that or a, a college level biology class. So just be focused on what I cover in class. Okay, so light reactions obviously is gonna be dealing with the sunlight. One of the key players that's released in our equation is oxygen. What is also going to be produced is ATP, and we know that that is directly related to energy. And then there's something called a hydrogen carrier molecule. The hydrogen carrier, this is the molecule that carries the hydrogen. Now this is gonna be important because this eventually will help 
in that breaking of the water, okay? So just right now, just know that light's coming in, oxygen, ATP, and this hydrogen carrier molecule is being produced. So that's what's coming in and what's going out. Dark reactions, and so these are the two phases or parts of photosynthesis, remember that. And so for the dark reactions, I'm gonna take two of the products from the light reactions. So that would be ATP and this, do you remember what that's called? Hydrogen carrier molecule. It's going to react with carbon dioxide. Remember, carbon dioxide is coming from us, okay? And it's going to make glucose. Okay, that's one of the products. So go back to your equation if you don't remember what the two products are. So here's my chloroplast. We saw that in the first lecture. So just, just a little bit of a review here. So I've got my chloroplast, which are in my mesophyll. The thylakoid membranes is where light reactions take place. And if I have a stack of them, that would be a grana. And then between the stacks of thylakoids, all this part here, kind of a light tan, is my stroma where dark reactions take place. Okay, we talked about pigments, and the main pigment is chlorophyll. Um, so plants, for photosynthesis to take place, it really needs these pigments embedded into that thylakoid membrane. So the sun, if there's no sunlight, then that's obviously reduced, but still some sunlight gets through even the clouds. So the energy that powers photosynthesis is the sun. Okay, so that is what powers photosynthesis. And so these pigments absorb the light. And we've already talked about wavelengths absorbing some and reflecting others in our last lecture. So chlorophyll, primary pigment, absorb. Now I had some other colors listed, but these are the two main ones. We'll do an activity with this. Red and blue, and it's going to reflect green. So that's why plants appear to be green. I talked about the example with the clothing. Now, there are five types of chlorophyll. You do need to know these. There, and we're gonna just focus on the first two, but there's A, B, C, and D. And you would think that it would be E, but because it is directly associated with bacteria, it's called bacterial chlorophyll. Okay, it would have been a lot easier if you made it E. So there's the two main ones in most plants is A and B. So you need to know A is found in algae, Okay, so A, algae, and B, all other types of plants that you would find in this area. Now the C and D, um, that is getting to like a blue-green algae, et cetera. So, but a majority of the chlorophyll, almost all of it is A and B. So A is in the algae, B is in the plants, but that's the predominant, we won't worry about the other three. Okay, now we've talked about chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is the main pigment in plants, and we're talking about average plants. As kind of a backup system, there's something called accessory pigments. So when the chlorophyll is not working, um, maybe the chlorophyll cannot absorb a certain wavelengths of light, then these accessory pigments kind of kick in. So it just so that there's more pigment, more energy for photosynthesis. So that's key. Types of pigments. Now, there's a lot more than what I have listed here, but again, I'm just hitting the main ones. Um, this spectrum down here are the wavelengths of light in a prism. And so these are the units of chlorophyll. Okay, that's why I was saying that it absorbs some and reflects others. So we have carotenoids. Um, that would be the grouping of yellow, orange, and brown. Carotenes, that should look familiar because carrots are orange, so you can remember that. This is kind of a mouthful. Xanthophyll, that's a yellow. And we're gonna do a lab on plant pigments and photosynthesis. And so you'll see some of these terms again. And then something called phi cobulins. Make sure you read that in your textbook or the handout, the PD, uh, PDFs that I gave you, because there's something about phi cobulins and blue-green algae that will be a test question. So to make sure you take a look at that. Okay, sorry about this waving. Okay, so light reactions, now to break it down even more, there's two 
photosystems for light reactions. And actually, you will see them, the first one that it hits is photosystem two, then photosystem one. Okay, that's the order. And it's just because that was the order that they were discovered. So it's just by date. So these two systems are working together and it's helping to move this energy from pigment to pigment. Okay. And I think it will make more sense when I get some diagrams up here. So let me pull up all the steps here and I'm gonna point out some key terms. Now the test question, I will list the steps. I'm not gonna ask you to write the steps of the light reactions, but you should be able to look at the steps of the light and dark reactions and pull out the key terms that are associated with that. So these are the steps for the light reactions. So here are some key things you need to know. First of all, the first word, light. Okay, as these electrons, we've had electrons in our first chapter, same thing. Um, these electrons get excited or energized when the chlorophyll is absorbing them through the pigments. And what it does is when they get charged up, they are then passed along to another um, chlorophyll pigment. And it just bumps along as it goes through getting charged up by the sunlight. So as it's moved, these electrons are moving through, providing energy for photosynthesis, okay? It's gonna help release oxygen, so there's a key word. More of these electron chains. And we had mentioned earlier that one of the products is ATP, okay? And we'll talk about this. And here's the other key word, thylakoid membrane. Those three things, those three terms should help you identify that these are the steps for light reactions. So now let's look at the diagram. So here's my chloroplast, and I've blown up one of these thylakoid membranes. Okay, so that's what the structure is here. We're gonna do this in class and activity with this. So make sure you take a look at this diagram prior to the activity. So here's my sunlight coming in. Here's photosystem two. Remember I said that goes first and then one. That's just because the order they were discovered. This is the pigment chlorophyll. Here's another one. Okay, so the photosystems are in the pigments of the chlorophyll. And what it does when the light hits it, it's gonna pass these electrons and bump it to the next one. Okay, see how it jumps from one to the next? And when it does that, it provides energy. See this molecule, this is inside the thylakoid membrane. This is a water molecule, so this is water. And what happens is when these get excited, it actually splits water. So water is split. So here's is a hydrogen, and then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna see this hydrogen carrier molecule. But this is the oxygen that leaves. And remember, for light reactions, that is one of the products. So when this water molecule splits as a result of these electrons causing it to split, oxygen is released, so that's when the plants release the oxygen. Now you have floating around all of these hydrogens, okay? And then I don't, if you look at the past slide, something called ATP synthase, and that's this little structure here embedded in the thylakoid membrane. Its only job is to recharge or to make ATP. So what happens, these hydrogen carrier molecules will move down the chute of this ATP synthase and when it does that, because you notice that a charge, that a hydrogen is a positive charge or a proton. And so it will recharge the ADP, adenosine diphosphate, adding one of these protons from the hydrogen, and now it's gonna make an ATP. That's another product of light reactions. And the third thing is over here with these other hydrogen and there's a hydrogen carrier molecule. So you can see in one thylakoid, all these are going on, and actually these pigments are all the way around the membrane. This is just one of the structures, okay? So definitely take some time, pause that. This uh, diagram is in your book also. Um, here's just another illustration, but you should be able to pick out, okay, here's my pigment, the light. Here's splitting the water, okay? So in this case, Here's the thylakoid membrane, here's the space, so they just flipped it. Um, here would be probably photosystem one, 
more light. Here's my hydrogen carrier molecule, ATP, ATP synthase to help recharge or make more ATP. Um, here's my oxygen that's released. So I can just look through there and pick out some key things, um, no matter how it's written or oriented. Okay, so the end products, just a review. I've got my hydrogen carrier molecule, oxygen, ATP, and that oxygen is going to be released into the environment. Then the other two um, products of light reaction is going to be going to the dark reactions, 